Alright guys, well I'm sorry I couldn't be here for you today, but I wanted to go over your quiz with you because you're going to be taking your test tomorrow. And I'll go ahead and post this online as well. Your homework tonight is going to be an application worksheet part two. Um, what you need to say is you need a calculator and you need your quiz passed back to you. Okay, so let's go over the quiz. Um, I'm not sure if this is form A or B, but um, I'm just going to do one form and then you guys can work together because they're very, very, very similar. Okay, so it says for questions one through four, find the missing side length. Do not round. Leave answers as simplified radicals when necessary. Okay, so trying to find PQ. I know this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, so it has a special relationship between the leg and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is actually root two larger. So if I'm going from the longer side to the smaller side, I'm going to divide. Sorry, my phone rang there for a second. Okay, so if I'm going from the longer side to the smaller side, I need to divide. So I'm going to go ahead and take 12 and divide it by root 2. Now I want to simplify this, so I need to multiply by root 2 over root 2, which makes 12 root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is root 2 squared, which is just 2. You guys did a really good job at this, by the way. And when I simplify the 2s, I'm left with a 6. So PQ is 6 root 2, and QR is also 6 root 2 because the legs are the same. Base angles are the same. More congruent, that means these legs are congruent. Okay, let's look at this one. This one is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I know there's a relationship between the hypotenuse and the smaller leg. The hypotenuse is twice as big, but if we're going from big to small, I'm going to divide. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. This side is 3, or KL is 3. And I know that there's a relationship of root 3 in between the short leg and the long leg. I'm going from short to long, so I'm going to multiply by root 3. The next, number 3. Okay, so this is a short leg going to a long leg. So I know I'm going to have to multiply. So 8 root 3 times root 3 is actually 8 times 3, which is 24. So SU is 24. And I know 8 root 3 going to the hypotenuse is going to be larger times 2. I don't multiply underneath the radical sign by 2. I multiply outside of the radical sign by root 2. So that's going to be 16 root 3. A, B. So if this is 15 and this is 15, then I know that this is an isosceles triangle, or this is 45 and this is 45. So I know that there's a relationship of root 2. I'm going from the smaller leg to the hypotenuse, which is longer, so I'm going to multiply. So that one's just going to be 15 root 2. Find the length of BC. Well, this is a right triangle. I may not have angles here, but I know I can use Pythagorean theorem. So 156 squared equals 60 squared plus BC squared. Let's see, and I already put this in my calculator. So 156 squared is 24,336. 60 squared is 3,600. Plus BC squared, when I subtract both sides, by 3,600. I'm left with BC squared equals 20,736. Take the square root of both sides, and I'm left with BC equals 144. Take the side of 144. I look at it. Does that make sense? It sure does. Moving on. All right, solve the triangle. Find each angle measured to the nearest degree 
and each side length to the nearest tenth. Show your reasoning. Well, I could use the fact that I have this side and this side to find this angle, which is what I'm going to do. But first, I think I'm going to try this and find this side right here. And once I find the angle, sorry, it's so annoying that phone keeps going. Okay, so I could find the angle and then find the side using trig, or I could just use the Pythagorean theorem again. So I would do 4 squared plus x squared equals 14 squared. I know this is 16 plus x squared equals 196. Subtract 16 from both sides, and I have x squared equals 180. Take the square root of both sides, and I've got x equals, let's see, what's the square root of 180? 13 and 4 tenths. So this is 13 and 4 tenths. I rounded to the nearest. Now that I've got my side, I'm going to go for the angle. So I already know this one. This one's 90 degrees. So I'm going to try and find F first. So if I'm trying to find F, I've got my hypotenuse, and I've also got my adjacent side. So I'm going to use cosine of angle F is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. If I want to find the angle, I use the inverse of cosine, so inverse of 4 over 14 equals my degree. If I put that in a calculator, I get 73 degrees. It asks me to measure to the nearest degree, so 73 degrees. Now I could just take 90, so if there's 180 degrees in a triangle, and I subtract 73 of them, I'm going to be left with 17. But let's let's double check using trig. This one's 73. I should get 17. Then I know for sure I'm right. Okay, so if I'm looking at angle E and I want to talk about my opposite over my hypotenuse, that would be sine inverse sine of 4 over 14. And if I put that in a calculator, I do indeed get 17 degrees. Let's see here. Number seven. Question seven through eight. Find the length of the miss missing side of each triangle. Round to the nearest tenth. So if I'm trying to find this missing side, just looking at my time here. I'm running out of time. Okay. So if I find the length of the missing side of each triangle, round to the nearest tenth. So first of all, I'm going to try and find this one here. Because then I'm going to use this and the 30, 60, 90 triangle to find x. So I've got opposite, and I've got adjacent, so that would be tangent. So tangent 24 equals opposite over adjacent. Multiply both sides by 36. I put that in a calculator. I get y is equal to 1603. Rounding it to a hundredth because I'm not done yet. So now this is 16.03. I know that this side leg is larger than this leg by root 3. So if I'm going from big to small, I'm going to divide by root 3. So x equals 16.03 divided by root 3. And that gives me. 9.2, rounded to the nearest tenth. All right, so over here, if I want to find this side, I know that a 45, 45, 90, this is going to be the same. Like the same. Now I'm going to use trig. I've got opposite, and I want hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse would be sine of 34 equals 6 over x. Take the inverse of this side. This is the way you guys said you like to do it. Inverse of this side. Then multiply both sides by 6. 
and that gives me 6 over sine 34 equals x. And that would leave x being 10.7 if I put that in my calculator. All right, you were flying a kite and you let out 80 feet of string. So 80 feet of string. There's 80 feet of string. This is my kite. The kite's angle of elevation from the ground. So from the ground. It says it is 40 degrees. So there's my angle of elevation. If the string is stretched straight, how high is the kite above the ground? So we want to know the height. Height of my kite. That's going to be x. I've got my angle. I'm looking for opposite. I've got hypotenuse, so that's sine. Sine of 40 equals opposite over hypotenuse. If I multiply both sides by 80, that side by 80, I'm going to get x equals. 51.4. And this time I didn't tell you to round, so I, I was kind of forgiving about that. Alrighty. Finally, the course set up for the boating race is represented below. Give the measure for the unmarked distance from point B back to point A. Alright, so this is not a right triangle, so I need to make it one. So first, we're going to talk about this angle and this side, and that y. So if I'm looking for y and that's opposite, and this is my hypotenuse, I'm going to say opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So sine of 28 equals opposite over hypotenuse, so multiply both sides. 7.5. I'm going to get y is about, and I don't have this one, so I have to put in a calculator. So if I put in a calculator, this would be 3.52. Now I'm going to try and find this side. Now that I have that piece of information, this is my right angle. This side is 3.52. So now I've got this angle, and I'm going to find this side. Notice that we aren't even using the 18 rounds, because that's that whole entire side, so it's kind of a little bit tricky. All right, so if I'm talking, I have opposite and hypotenuse. I'm going to use sine again. So this is going to be sine of 32 equals opposite, which is 3.52 over x. And then multiply, I'm oh sorry, we've got x in the denominator, so this needs to be 1 over sine 32 equals x over 3.52. And when I multiply both sides by 3.52, I get 3.52 over sine 32 equals x. Put that in a calculator, and I get 2. Alright, so this distance right here is 6.6. .6. And again, I wasn't specific on um, rounding, so I was a little bit lenient on that. Alright, so that's it. Work on your homework.